Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Serial Overdrive here, and today, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be telling you guys how my sort of YouTube setup works and how I do this sort of on the cheap, okay? A lot of people are out there telling you guys that you need Canon cameras for streaming and crazy SM7B setups, and while it is nice, and that's sort of the end goal for me, that's what I'd like to get as I grow, and you know, as you guys help me grow if you hit the subscribe button and do all that stuff. But right now I'm working with something quite a bit less than that. I'm working with a $50 setup. That's right, $50 and you can get this sort of quality because unlike so many of these other YouTubers who sit out there and they'll tell you about a microphone and then they'll do the whole report on that microphone on an SM7B or some sort of 900, 800, whatever dollar microphone, I'm going to be doing this all with this setup. What you guys are watching right now, that's literally me editing this video. It's sort of an Inception-esque thing. I don't know how I'm going to pull it off. And in fact, I might not, but let's go with it. Uh, so yeah, hardware-wise, what am I using? Well, as I said, I've got this, you know, blue snowball microphone. I got it for $50. It was on sale at Sam's. Great deal. Recommend it. And then in addition to that, one of the later additions I did is I added a pop filter. So that's just to edit out a little bit of the background audio and everything like that. But honestly, here we go. I raised the pop filter right now. Can you tell the difference? To be honest, I really can't because most of the audio quality that you're hearing here is done all with Audacity. So there's a few programs that I use for editing my videos and making everything really feel good. Now the first thing I do is I use the Windows recording software, Windows key G. You get a little button that you can record in and then you're good to go. You can just record. But, but there is a catch here. Don't record your voice with this software. If you record your voice with this Windows gaming software, it's going to come out really, really bad. Um, it's just going to be a really bad quality and that was one of the mistakes I used to make. I'd record something in Audacity, like just a quick how-to video, and it sounded perfect. Not, well, not perfect. It sounded good, right? And then I'd listen to something I recorded in Windows, and it sounded horrible. So what's the solution, right? You do two things. Start up Audacity right before you record. Just hit the record button on it, do a quick test, make sure it's got your microphone selected. I'm going to be showing all this stuff in the screen. Um, but yeah, like make sure it's got your microphone selected, everything looks good. Just let it record, and then just start your recording like windows g hit record and right when i hit record i say hey 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 everybody serial overdrive here what is going on and it's that simple you literally just lead in with that and that's when the video starts if you're looking how you sync things up look for big events in the game right so if you get some sort of crazy quick kill right like if i'm playing fortnite and i manage to kill 100 people all at once well <laughs> i'm cheating but if i do that i'm gonna go nuts right i'm gonna be excited i'm gonna be going off that point that's when you're going to see that audio tick up you're going to see it sort of a little bit overblown right link that up with when that actual event happens listen to the video and everything should sync up pretty good generally what i found is the sync is going to be closer to the end than the beginning so what i tend to do is when i say my ending words in a video so generally to end a video i'll say all right have a good one everybody and peace something like that right peace that's my sign for click that button on the mouse to end the recording. So generally I can sync things up on the back with that piece rather than in the front. That gives me quite a bit of, that actually works quite well. Generally if you sync things up in the back instead of the front, you're good to go and then you just trim any extras off the front of that video. So then everything's gonna line up perfectly. Obviously if you're editing things up, if it's more than just a commentary style let's play, it's gonna be a little bit different, right? So. If I'm doing DaVinci Resolve, so you pop that open and then you just sync the two clips up, right? Like you just drop your video clip, you drop your audio clip, push that all the way back, cut off the beginning of the video, you're good to go, bing, bang, boom. Literally, that's it, you've got your let's play and you're good to go. Um, it sounds too easy, but it, it really is. It's a simple way to do things, okay? So yeah, you're good to go. now. If you're, if you're gonna be cutting things up a little bit more, DaVinci Resolve still works perfectly and you're not gonna need to pay for that version of the software until you're a little bit more experienced, okay? Like, as you get better and better at it, you're gonna probably find things that you want and eventually you're gonna end up paying for the software. But if you're just a basic video editor, like I'm just doing how-to videos, there's no sorts of crazy editing that's needed. Maybe for one of my other channels where I do travel videos and stuff like that, it has literally no views, but you know, maybe one of those channels I could actually use a little bit of the editing because I actually do have fun with it. And then maybe it makes sense to pay for DaVinci Resolve. But if you're looking to do this on the cheap, if you're looking for this $50 setup that I'm touting, 
this is what you do. You literally just use DaVinci Resolve. It's free. You cut everything up. You edit it together. You can use little points in the left to sort of sync things in, zoom in, zoom out, do all sorts of crazy stuff. It works almost as good as any sort of program that you're going to pay for, except that it's free. There's no subscription or anything like that. You can stop making YouTube videos for years and come back to it not having spent a penny. And, you know, the software is going to change. Everything's going to be different. But there's no subscription that you've been paying. And I, I really like that, right? Like, I, I get it. I don't mind the business model a lot of the time. But when it comes to stuff like this and there's such a good free option out there, why not take it? So, yeah, basically, that that's all it is. Literally, I'm recording this in Audacity. And then I'm editing everything up in DaVinci Resolve. It's that simple. The microphone, again, Blue Snowball. This is probably the best audio quality that you can get. And one other thing that I do like to do with Audacity is generally, if you go to Effects, I like to go to Bass and Treble. And then I can mess around with that. So generally, what I do with my voice is I put my bass around 3, 4, 5 decibels. And the treble, I'll move down to like negative 1. And the volume, I'll dump up. I'll bump up by about one decibel. This isn't that much, and if you do too much, it's going to be noticeable. But if you just start tweaking things like that, it's going to be so much better sounding. It's going to be so much crisper. One of the things that something like a Blue Snowball is missing is that lower bass to it. And you can add that. You can add that with the software. Just add a little bit of bass to it, and it's going to sound a lot better. It's going to sound a lot fuller. It's going to just bring everything out. Now, if you're doing this with streaming, you can use OBS or Streamlabs, add some filters on and just add a little bit of bass. That is going to be CPU or yeah, I believe that's going to be CPU intensive because you're literally doing that live. So you need a little bit of a better machine to do that. Generally, when I stream, I'm not a big streamer, but when I do stream on Twitch, I literally just let the audio come as it is. It doesn't sound that bad. This is sort of, I'm going to try and do it right here. So this is the audio that's not edited. You hear my voice. It's a little bit a little more like trebly and everything like that. And now you can also play with that by moving the mic up and down, adjusting how far away your mouth is from that microphone. I'm pretty bad about it. I like to lean back a little bit like I'm doing right now. And then when I get intense, I lean forward and that adds a little bit to the video, it adds a little bit to everything because you don't see my face. So you can't see all these hand motions I'm doing. You can't see the fact that I'm standing on my head. No, I'm not really doing that, but whatever. Um, you, you can't see all of that, right? So I've got to do that with my voice. So leaning forward does add that excitement to it, but it also means that things do get quieter at times. And again, this is something that you can easily add it in DaVinci. You literally just cut up the audio and just bump the volume up by maybe three decibels where it gets a little too quiet. And if it gets too loud, knock it down by three decibels. It's not that hard. Generally, you just sort of listen to it and you get the feel for it. But like, yeah, I see so many people talking about these crazy setups and how they've got Photoshop and all sorts of stuff like this. Like, I the reason I did this was I saw some like beginning YouTuber, right? And they're like, my first YouTube setup. And it's, they, they literally have a 3080 graphics card. They have, they have a $3,000 PC. They have a microphone on a boom stand, an SM7B, a Go XLR mixer, all that sort of hot stuff. But the thing is, like, they don't even know if this is a hobby that they're going to like. They don't even know if this is something that they're going to want to do. And they just dropped, let's say the computer's for gaming, right? So let's throw that out. They just dropped about, a, well, probably not $1,000. So SM7B, that's a $400 mic with taxes the stand, everything like that, you're probably dropping five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. You throw in that mixer. Yeah, you, you might have just dropped a thousand dollars on a setup that you don't even know if it's going to work. And honestly, if you're just starting off in YouTube, you're not going to make that thousand dollars anytime fast. And if you do, hit me up because um, if I help you get started and then you get big, you sort of owe me, right? You got to shout me out. Or, no, I'm just kidding. I hope you guys all do amazing. Um, but yeah, like I, I just wanted to give people a better opinion out there. One thing I did, well, I did sort of go a little bit nuts on is the keyboard I've got here. It's a, a Durgod Venus. The reason I got this is because it's got those silent keys. So right now, let's hope this doesn't stop the recording. I'm typing. And if you guys listen to this, you cannot really hear that typing. It doesn't sound like clickety click, clickety clack. So here's the thing. When it comes to audio quality, one of the things I always hated is those keyboard sounds. It was like clicking and clacking and everything like that. I think it sounds horrible. And a lot of people have that on their streams. They have that on everything like that. So I just bought a keyboard with silent keys. It's a little bit expensive. It's probably $100, $150 for this keyboard. But that's not needed, right? Like 
99% of my streaming career, my YouTube career, I was doing it with just a normal keyboard. It made some noise, but didn't do anything crazy. Generally, my microphone, I set it in front of my keyboard. So basically, my keyboard, my hands reach around the microphone, and then the mic is less likely to pick up that sound. The last thing you want to do is have your mic like right by your keyboard and not... You, you, you want that front diode. You want the sound that's mostly picking up from the front to be your voice and nothing else. Anything that's making noise should be behind that microphone. So that would be computer fans, keyboards, everything like that behind the microphone, yourself, and pretty much that's it in front of the microphone. And face-wise, I position myself about six inches to a foot away from the microphone. That isn't too far, but at the same time, hopefully that gets a lot of that like sp out of it, like that SP, that s probably heard that right there. I can see it on the screen. Um, and I find that really annoying. And that's one of the things that a really good mic is going to be able to eliminate without too much trouble. And that's one of those things that I can't get rid of just, you know, with this. The other thing is sirens. Conveniently, I think you guys can hear one coming by right now. Maybe. Um, but yeah, sirens are very hard to eliminate. And some of the more expensive mics are going to get rid of those. So there's definitely advantages to having a more expensive setup, but it's not going to make or break it. Really, if you just use these tips that I gave you, it, it's going to work out perfectly. You're going to be able to do a lot with just a little. And I think that's really important because all these people out there touting, you know, $500 streamer setups and stuff like that, they're really just trying to get affiliate money. And if you notice down below in the link, the comments, the description, there's no real affiliate links, right? Maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll post. No, I'm not going to post one. No, there's no affiliate links. This isn't sponsored. There's no money I'm making by recommending you some crazy product. So I'm not. I'm recommending you a pretty cheap product to get started. And if you like it, then we can talk upgrades. If you like this video, let me know because we can talk upgrades. We can talk about getting you a better microphone, right? We can talk about sort of the next step, which is going to be a USB microphone that can go XLR. And then you're going to get that mixer where you can sort of adjust the settings on it. Then you're going to get that SM7B and you'll be doing better than me. Right now, I'm still using this blue snowball for all my videos. So just go check out my videos and you'll literally hear the quality that I'm talking about. You'll hear it in this video. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple setup and it works great for me. It's also extremely mobile, which is a nice thing. Like literally if I've got a business trip or work trip or I'm just going on vacation, let's say, right? I want to play video games in, I don't know. I want to play video games in Dubai because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, I can pack up this laptop, pack up the microphone. I'm good to go. It's, it's a mobile setup that's going to work out perfectly for you. So yeah, I, I definitely recommend looking into this as an alternative to getting some crazy setup like Ninja or something like that. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to let me know. Also for thumbnails, let's just go into this real quick. Again, you don't need to pay for Photoshop or anything like that. I know a lot of you guys like to use it as an excuse to spend some money and by all means, stimulate the economy as much as you want, but you don't need to. You can go to Canva. It's canva.com, completely free. That's what I use to make all my thumbnails and it's, it's pretty easy. If you look into how to make 3D text, that's, you know, you literally just take two texts and sort of line them up. Um, you just put an image down, you give it a little bit of extra brightness, extra contrast, you're going to get a little bit more pop to it, and that's all you need. It's nothing too complicated, it's all pretty simple, and it's going to get you pretty far. Obviously, at this point in my YouTube career, and I say that with air quotes, um, I've got about 4 million views, I'm headed on my way to 5 million um, I've got 10,000 subscribers, so th this obviously worked for me. I didn't blow up, I didn't do anything crazy, but it works. There's some people out there who listen to this and say, hey, Serial's audio, audio quality is good enough for me to give him a sub, and it's good enough for me to listen to this how-to video or listen to this slight commentary and then move on my way and be happy. Uh, so yeah, also one other tip, listen to your audio on multiple speakers, okay? like. I've got a set of Bose speakers, I've got a set of, well, my computer, my laptop speakers, I've got a few pairs of headphones, and every now and then I'll listen to my videos across all of them just to see how it sounds, and the, it, it's going to be crazy. For instance, AirPods, I really hear that like S, that like S, but when I listen to it on something like my laptop speakers, I don't hear that at all. When I listen to it on my headphones, my normal like bassy headphones, I don't hear it either, so... Yeah, that's a few tips, and hopefully that's going to get you guys on your way and into YouTube. Or
Twitch or whatever you're going for. So yeah, welcome to the world of streaming, the world of audio, the world of video. And if you have any questions or you want to see more of these videos, just let me know down below in the comments. Like I said, I'm not trying to sell you anything. And if you're looking for other good YouTubers, a few that I could recommend in this space that are actually way bigger than me and they give way better advice. Um, Devin Nash is really good when it comes to just SEO and stuff like that. And then Harris Heller is really good when it comes to sort of equipment reviews and just telling you guys how to set everything up. He does go a little bit more on the expensive side than what I'm recommending here, but he's also a bit of an audiophile. So he probably would listen to a video like this and just talk about how horrible the audio is and how I wasted $50. But hey, it works for me and maybe it'll work for you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.